All right, just stopping right here before you even start the video. Every video is going to come with a disclaimer, so feel free if you've already watched this disclaimer to skip ahead into the actual episode. All the information that you see um, in this video, in this episode today, has been taken from Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me, 9th edition. This was written uh, by Paula, her full name's right there, from and her Polish Choice research team. Polish Choice is a pretty well-known and trusted skincare uh, brand. I've taken parts from this book that I found most interesting and intriguing that I think deserves to um, be known, so hopefully you're interested as well. I might turn off comments. Uh, if I haven't, please be respectful in the comments and realize that this is not my my research and this is not this book was made in 2015 I believe so I'm some of the ideas they might have changed they may have introduced new research um, I can't you know go too far depth into that but just be mindful of that and enjoy today's episode because I sure enjoyed learning and creating it hello all you shining stars and welcome to my channel shining star soup it's another soup bowl Sunday, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing product by product reviews. This is episode 8, which is part 1, and in today's episode, we are going to be reviewing Alme, Avida, and Avino. Now, um, I do have to say right before we really get into this video, is that these product reviews are from a book that was published years ago. So it is possible that some of these reviews aren't um, applicable anymore. They may have been a change of formula. There might have been a discontinuation of the products. Uh, these are not my opinion. This is Paula's Choice, the skincare book, the reviews. Uh, they do rate them on a scale of best good, average, and poor, the ones to stay away from. I'll be making notes in this video um, saying things that I think may be applicable or important. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, I am breaking it down to just three brands at a time. If you see cut in the video, it's because I needed some water or a little bit of a vape break because I have no idea how long this is. Uh, these videos uh, from this point on are going to be because it does look like I got a lot of product reviews a lot of products that I was very interested in uh, learning more about All right, so jumping right into it uh, We are starting with Alme and Alme to me seems like it's an MLM Don't call me on that, but this is just the impression that it gives me I am familiar, but not that familiar with it. So Alme is a brand. Uh, the strengths are excellent assortment of foundations with uh, sunscreen. Weaknesses is the company discontinued all of the skincare products with the exception of makeup removers, and they seem to have mediocre blush and eyeshadows. Number one is Alme makeup removers. Now all of their makeup removers that were listed are rated good. Most of them are relatively effective, but particularly their oil-free makeup remover towelettes are not effective in removing long wear mascara, long wear foundation, or lip color. So to sum up their makeup removers, if you are looking for those towelettes, just keep in mind that they are not effective in removing your long wearing products. Number two, uh, one of their best foundations is right there. The Clear Complexion Foundation is rated best, though it does contain... So, 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 uh, why am I not talking right now? The BHA acid that m might be uh, in a pH too high to be helpful. The pH level is pH 6 for this particular uh, that acid right there. With that said, however, it still offers a smooth blend and will provide good light to medium coverage with a natural matte finish. It is also very warm tone, so it may have too much peach for some medium to tan skin tones. This foundation is best for normal to oily skin. 
Another one rated the best is Nearly Naked Liquid Makeup SPF 15. Easily one of Almy's best liquid foundations. It's a lightweight cream that blends well to a smooth matte finish. Well suited for someone with normal to oily skin. Nine shades with options for fair to tan skin tones. Another best is TLC Truly Lasting Color 16 Hour Makeup SPF 15. To note, however, it won't last the full 16 hours, especially in the oily areas uh, as good as when it was first uh, applied. However, it has a silky texture that is easy to blend, medium coverage, and a matte finish to keep excess oil in check, just not all day. Another best one is the Smart Shade Smart Balance Skin Balancing Makeup SPF 15. Note, <laughs> there is no way for a foundation to actually know where skin is oily or dry and act accordingly. However, the sunscreen ingredients in this particular foundation are good. The silky foundation provides little moisture because the ingredients are primarily about absorbing oil and moisture. It goes on smoothly, blends nicely with a soft matte finish that may become a bit powdery later. Although this, the foundation dispenses white with small colored specks, the whiteness will disappear as you blend and it is best for normal to oily skin. Now we're moving on to the good ones, the decent ones, but not the best ones. Uh, the Line Smooth Makeup SPF 15 is a decent one, but beige and warm will go peach and its high draining claim is mediocre at best. Another good one is the Smart Shade Anti-Aging Makeup SPF 20 because it borders on making your skin shiny and is a hard pass for those with oily skin. And the one rated poor was the Wake Up Hydrating Makeup SPF 13. Rated is average for its gold shimmer and drying out of the skin. Nobody wants that. Okay, Elmay concealers are not really the best. The foundations are reviewed to be much better. The good one is the Clear Complexion, Complexion Concealer. It has a salicylic acid that is too high of a level and can't help reduce blemishes and blackheads. <sighs> Keep that in mind. Don't buy that product if you are just wanting to reduce the blemishes and the blackheads. It has claims of being able to transform to an ideal shade, but doesn't really perform. And um, the Wake Up Under Eye Concealer will only diminish fine lines temporarily. And that one does not do a very good job at uh, concealing. So Clear Complexion is too high of a level to help with your blemishes and blackheads, while Smart Shade Concealer is not good at concealing. The average one um, is the Line Smoothing Concealer with SPF 10. The Nearly Naked Cover-Up Stick are lackluster. And the Hard Pass one, stay away from, is the Clear Complexion Concealer and Treatment Gel Blemish Heal Technology. Because the pH is too high, the S is too high to be effective. And that one right there contains high amounts of alcohol. So hard pass with the Almay, uh, that one. Moving on to the Almay Pine powders. The best one is the Line Smoothing Pressed Powder. It feels silky, goes on smooth, makes normal to dry skin look polished. Another best one is the Nearly Naked Loose Powder, which is a talic based powder offering an ultra silky texture. However, if you have oily skin, uh, you'll want a more absorbent powder than the Nearly Naked. The good one is the TLC Truly Lasting Color Pressed Powder SPF 12. Again, the claim of 16 hour wear won't last that long for oily skin. Moving on to the average Clear Complexion Pressed Powder, I think I've heard of that product before, has a dry texture and contains cornstarch. Uh, but this, the acid present at 0.6% cannot be obtained in powder form. You want to pass completely on the Smart Shade Smart Balance Pressed Powder. The truth is that makeup cannot magically adjust to your skin color because it doesn't know what skin color you have. 
This particular powder also has very little coverage and minimal oil absor absorption. So just pass on the Smart Shade Balance Press Powder. Number five, uh, the Almay Blushes and Bronzer. A good bronzer is a Smart Shade Blush. Basically, it's a decent liquid blush for normal to oily skin. Your average one is the powder blushes, which tend to flake, and the Smart Shade Bronzer tends to turn orange regardless of your shade. Another couple to pass on. Almay eyeshadows are all pretty much average and they don't blend out well. Your Almay eye and brow uh, liners, your best one is that liquid eyeliner uh, because it goes on smoothly and easily, easily without flaking. Your good ones are your Proud Defining Pencil. It just requires a very soft touch because of its dry texture. A good eye are their eyeliners but they are slightly prone to smudging. A good one is the Intense Eye Color Liquid Liner but again they tend to be overly shiny. Your average one is the Liquid Eyeliner Pen that is more of a pass because it dries out too quickly. So the one, your regular liquid eyeliners are the best but your Liquid Eyeliner Pen is more of a pass. The Mascara. Uh, the best one is the One Coat Lengthening Mascara. It does, however, take more than one coat, but it applies cleanly, it wears well, and removes well. Another best is the One Coat Nourishing Mascara Triple Effect. It does do well for maximizing length, curl, and thickness, but just don't go in too heavy with it. Uh, a good one is the Get Up and Grow. Uh, it's more of a be a area of the claim, it'll make your lashes grow. Another good one is the One Coat Nourishing Mascara Thickening Waterproof. Again, be leery of that thickening claim. And the one you want to pass completely on is uh, the Dial Up Mascara and Intense Eye Color Mascara. They have a low rating because of the chance to get litter into your eye. So to sum it up, Elmay's makeup removers are decent but not remarkable. Their foundations are rated high overall. Their liquid eyeliner is spot on and two of their mascaras, the one coat lengthening, lengthening and the one coat nourishing are decent. Okay, I'm taking a little breather. Uh, you'll see a cut in the video um, before we jump into Avita. All right. <sighs> Vita? Maybe it's just Vita? <laughs> that one right there. Uh, strengths. Effective use of beneficial plant oils and as extracts in some products. Excellent moisturizing mask options. Superior tinted moisturizers. The weaknesses of this brand are that several products contain essential oils or fragment components that can cause skin sensitivity or irritate your skin. We're going to start off with the cleansers. Generally, their cleansers aren't rated that high by Paula's Choice. A uh, good one is Enbrightment Brightening Cleanser. This is basically an overpriced product that has fragrance and a very low uh, sil sil that acid that won't be on the skin long enough to be effective. Another good one is Green Science Perfecting Cleanser. It's another overpriced product that does have fragrance in it, but not too much to be wor worrisome. However, it is going to require a washcloth to avoid a residue and remove all of your makeup. Your average one is the Outer Piece Forming Cleanser. Again, it's overpriced. Uh, it has alcohol and the acid amount is too tiny to really make a difference. And the ones that are a hard pass is the uh, Botanical Kinetics Purifying Gel Cleanser. There is two irritants and it's loaded with fragrance. The All Sensitive Cleanser is a poor choice for sensitive skin as it is loaded with preservatives that can cause irritation. Jumping right into the Pure Comfort Eye Makeup Remover. It's good, water-based and gentle, but isn't recommended for removing long-wearing makeup. The plant extracts used in this one will soothe rather than irritate. So, I mean, it's decent, but not for not for really long-wearing makeup. Uh, number three, the, the toners. The good one is, um, and I'm just going to put that there because I don't know how to properly say that word, uh, the Exfoliating Cleanser. It is overpriced. It contains fragrance, but does have non-irritating plant 
and nut oils, which is a good choice for flaky skin over the winter months. The average one is the Botanical Kinetic Skin Firming Slash Tony Agent. It has a high amount of fragrance rose extract, alcohol, and a very small amount of that beneficial acid. This one is minimally beneficial and it's not firming like it claims. And the toners you want to stay away from is a Botanical turning, Toning Mist because peppermint is the second ingredient and it also contains witch hazel and alcohol. Well-known skin irritants, the Enbrightment Brightening Treatment Toner, the, the amount of acid in it is too low to be effective, and the rosemary extract smell is overbearing and potentially irritating to the skin, and the Green Science Replenishing Toner is another one with far too much rosemary extract. The Avita Exfoliants and Scrubs are both rated low. This one right here is way overpriced with very abrasive agents. As well to note um, that tourmaline, or however you pronounce it, has no established benefit for the skin. And even if it did, you will rinse the scrub off before seeing any benefit. A very poor one to stay away from is the Botanical Kinetics Exfoliant. It contains several irritating ingredients including lavender, witch hail, and blom lint. And all of those are irri irritations for all skin types. Number five, the moisturizers. Daytime, nighttime, eye creams and serums. Uh, none of them, none of the moisturizer line is high, is rated highly at all. The best rating is average at best. And that is that one. Uh, the benefit, beneficial ingredients are hindered by the jar packaging. And this word right there, Though that amount is minuscule in the product, it is actually potentially problematic. Again, with that um, tourmaline not being known to have any beneficial impact, uh, and there's barely a dusting of it in the product anyway, but keep in mind with that one right there, that is very problematic for the skin. So when you're reading the ingredients, look out for that um, in, in all your ingredients. Apparently is very prominent in the Avita series. Pour. Hard pass is the all sensitive moisturizer. The second ingredient is lavender extract, which is actually an irritant, especially for sensitive skin. There are decent emollients, but it lacks potent antioxidants. So, I mean, all sensitive moisturizer having that lavender ingredient is not good. Another poor one is the Botanical Kinetics Hydrating Lotion. Basically, this is a highly priced moisturizer with problem ingredients such as lavender and that one, the eugenol, however you say that, known as skin irritants. So disappointing. <sighs> Another poor one. Enbrightment Brightening Correcting Cream. Jar packaging hurts that beneficial ingredient. Again, with irritating rosemary leaf extract, the Enbrightening brightening correcting lotion and cream i'll just sum those up <laughs> um again uh the correction correcting serum as well is um they're they're all rosemary and they all ha they all have irritating ingredients for any skin type that entire enbrightment brightening correcting blah blah cream lotion serum pour again your green science, your green science is the same. Very expensive with over the top claims regarding argan oil. Jar packaging is going to hurt any benefits. That's the firming eye cream, the firming face cream, which actually has ingredients that are very, that are not moisturizing and drying. Your lifting serum is expensive with pally oil. That is a significant irritant for the skin. That ingredient right there, pally oil, however you say that. Uh, the Green Science Line Minimizer, very expensive with over-the-top claims. That one contains rosemary abstract and Thai ginger, again, causing skin irritation. Also, it has several irritating synthetic pra uh, fragrances. Last one, there, that one right there, the Charged Radiant Cream, again, contains a lot of unnecessary irritants, such as lavender, orange and lemon peel. You don't want those in your skin and I have seen products before that have them. Number six, Avita uh, Life Care, Lip Life Care, Lip Care. The good one is the Lip Saver 
uh, SPF 15 is decent, but the flavor is cinnamon and clove, which apparently isn't a very nice flavor for most. The average one that you can pass on, just go for something else, is the Nourishment Renewing Lip Treatment. Again, no ingredients that will plump your lips over time. If that is what you want it for, there are many less expensive options out there. Number seven is their specialty, uh, specialty skincare products. The best one is actually that one, the, the Charge Radiance Mask. This one is good for normal to dry skin with no alarming ingredients. Another good one is the Deep Cleansing Herbal Clay Mask. It's pretty standard and more suited for normal to dry skin. The average, the Outer Piece Acne Relief Lotion is lightweight, matte finish, the BHA with 0.5% acid with a pH of 3.9, meaning it will exfoliate, but not very much. It is better for blemish prone um, than it would be for more stubborn acne because more stubborn acne will need 2%. Another average one is the Outer Piece Acne Spot Relief. Needlessly expensive. It does include alcohol, even though it has a good 2% um, acid and a pH of 3.7. Uh, again, that alcohol. Another average one is the Outer Piece Cooling Mask. Another yeah, expensive one. Doesn't contain anything that's going to bring peace to acne prone skin. It has more alcohol than the spot relief and the fragrance can be irritating. Now your poor ones, the ones to stay away from. Your embrightment, brightening intensive massage masks. Good for dry skin and overnight treatment. However, it is extremely fragrant with that rosemary leaf abstract. Your intense hydrating mask is a mixed bag of helpful and potentially harmful ingredients, including a large amount of lavender abstract. Your outer piece acne relief pads, so the pH of the base is too high to exfoliate your skin. Number eight, Avita Foundations. The best one is the Inner Light Mineral Tinted Moisturizer. It's expensive, but it has effective sunscreen and is suitable for normal to dry skin. And even though it does have lavender and bergamot for its scent, the extracts are very low in it. So that's a good one to, to go by, the tinted moisturizer. Uh, Avi the concealer, average, it applies choppy and can cause shininess. Uh, Avita Powder is rated good. The Inner Light Mineral Press Powder. The mineral in this powder, though, causes shine, doesn't help it. So you're not going to want to reach for this if you have oily skin. Average is the Inner Light Mineral Dual Foundation. Not recommended for sensitive skin because it contains fragrance. The Avita Bronzer, this one right there, um, it's overly shimmery for the face. It's average. The Avita eyeshadows are good. The Petal Essence eye color, though, has lack of range and it comes over on overly shiny. So if you like that sort of thing, then you might like their eyeshadows. Their eyebrow and eye and brow liner is average, nothing special. The Avita, um, and I still think I'm saying that wrong, sorry if I am. Lip color and lip liners, a good one is the Nourish Mint Sheer Mineral Lip Color. Contains some good antioxidants, but has fragrances. Also includes that one right there, uh, which is known to be irritating. Another one is Nourishment Smoothing Lip Color. Same thing to note, potentially irritating because it contains that thing right there. Uh, the Color Gloss, that one, uh, the gloss doesn't last that long. The That lip pigment doesn't have good stain powder. Uh, the two you want to stay away from is the Lip Shine because the Lip Shine has peppermint and yeast, which is liquid, uh, licorice. Lemon and basil oils can actually cause lip irritation. Uh, the Nourishment Hydrating Lip Glaze. The Strong Mint flavor isn't good and can make your dry, chapped lips worse. So, uh, Their mascara is average, worth the pass, doesn't live up to its claims. The Face and Body Illuminator is good at the Petal Essence Face Accents. Keep in mind, it will apply more shimmer than pigment. Their brushes, however, are the best. They have really good brushes. The whole line seems good, very good for quality. Their face brushes. Uh, their specialty products are average. The Color Options Eyeshadow Transformer is basically an overpriced, unnecessary product. 
To sum it up, you want to stay clear of their moisturizer line completely, find a better brand, try their tinted moisturizer, their lip products, and their brushes. Everything else is pretty questionable for the most part. Again, probably because of that huge rule or whatever the hell that was called. All right, now we're going to move on to Aveeno, the skincare only. Taking another quick, quick drink break. All right, Aveeno, which I am familiar with because it's a pretty standard drugstore brand. Strengths are a good range of sunscreen. Weaknesses is ineffective anti-acne products with reliance on soy. They're cleansers. The Positively Ageless Daily Exfoliating Cleanser is not a good option for very dry skin and it's pretty standard. Uh, the Positively Radiant Cleanser is good for all skin types but very dry. The Smart Essentials Pore Purifying Facial Wash isn't really any pore more pro purifying than any others but it is a good expensive option for normal to oily and or combination skin the average one the clear complexion cleanser bar contains 0.5 bha acid but the ph level is too high to be effective as an exfoliant it is also very drying it might work for normal to oily skin and those who don't have blemish prone skin. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of it. Uh, the moisturizer bar can leave a, leave a residue on the skin. The positively radiant daily cleansing pads won't do a great job of dissolving makeup or removing excess surface oil. They also have a dry, they also have a strong fragrance. And the ultra calming foaming cleanser uh, has fever few, um, I don't know anything about this ingredient. It's actually a problem for the skin because it causes contact dermatitis according to research. Even though it contains uh, a very little amount of the fever few, uh, it's a recommended pass. And that was the ultra calming foaming lotion. Okay, moving on to the exfoliants and scrubs. The skin brightening daily scrub is rated good. It's standard and decent suitable for all skin types except very dry your average one is the smart essentials daily detoxifying scrub because it's highly uh frag fragrant it has lots of fragrances there's also non-toxins there is no toxins in the skin that p can be scrubbed away just uh food for thought the moisturizer, the entire line is average at best. I will only uh, talk about a couple that are potentially concerning despite being rated average. The Clear Complexion Daily Moisturizer is a heavily fragranced product that will do little to clear skin or help with blemishes as the BHA is too low to be effective. The Positively Radiant uh, Daily Moisturizer F SPF 15 is average for normal to combination skin. It is also not gentle enough for sensitive skin because it has fragrance and the active sunscreen ingredients in this one can cause sensitivity as well. The Smart Essentials Anti-Fatigue Eye Treatment, uh, again it's a hard pass because the Southern Wood in this one is an extract that is actually an active ingredient in the alcoholic drink absinthe better pass on that uh, anti-fatigue eye treatment, especially if you use that around your eyes. As I mentioned, the moisturizing line is average at best, with the exception of one that was actually rated poor. Uh, the Positively Radiant Tinted Moisturizer SPF 30, the ingredients in this one will encourage more of what you don't want to see in the mirror. Wrinkles and brown spots, definitely avoid the Radiant Tinted Moisturizer. Avoid. The sun care. They were already good. Uh, the entire entire um, the entire continuous protection sunblock lotion uh, line, with the exception of SPF 70, 85, and 100 SPF, um, are are good. Uh, the continuous protection is misleading because all sunscreen has to be reapplied throughout the day. Your Hydro Box spray. Uh, the only issue with that one is spray-on sunscreens do contain high amounts of alcohol. 
Uh, the natural protection mineral block face stick is a drawback because it, it can leave a white cast. Uh, but the sunscreen lotion, the natural protection mineral block sunscreen lotion, can leave a slight white cast and it's somewhat drying, uh, matte finish, but it is fragrance free and a good option for sensitive skin. Now what the ones you absolutely want to keep away from is the continuous protection line offering SPF 70 and above. These products can cause irritation because they have a problematic preservative. In this case, higher SPF for Aveeno skincare products is not better. Stay away from the SPF 70 and above. The other stuff is okay. Lastly, um, the Lavino Lip Care is rated poor. The Essential Moisturizer Lip Condition SPF 15 does not actually contain the UV protecting ingredients recommended by Polish Choice. To sum it up, the entire Aveeno cleanser line is good. The moisturizers are average at best, but you got to completely pass on the positively radiant tinted moisturizer and the sunscreen with SPF 70 or higher. So this is going to wrap up episode 8, which is product by product review part 1. Um, next, episode, next week will be uh, product by product reviews for Avon, Bare Essentials, which is actually Bare Minerals and Benefit Cosmetics. So we'll see you next Sunday, probably with uh, me spending too much time on editing these videos. Thanks guys. <laughs>